Gemini, hello and welcome to your weekly guidance for the week of September 1st through the 7th. Where did the summer go? But we are all the more richer and wiser for the events of Mercury retrograde, as well as the full moon in Aquarius, which I'm sure was rocking you all's beliefs about what's possible. With Uranus in the sign of Taurus, your 12th house, you guys are coming to new realizations about your lifestyle and the choices that you might be driven to make from an unconscious place. And when we become more conscious of our driving forces, our motives, especially when Mercury has stationed direct um, on the 28th, which was last Mercury day, it's easier to make decisions from a grounded place, from a centered place, from an aligned place that honors you and all that you are. The angels gave us our first card, the Empress. I sense that there's a new radical sense of accountability that you all are taking to enjoy pleasure, to enjoy your life, to enjoy yourselves. Six of fire. This is coming up because as you celebrate yourself, you'll see others, you'll attract others that celebrate you. It's that simple. We are magnets for all that we are, all that we are attracting. Um, it's just a matter of timing. As we open our hearts to enjoy our lives, joy comes and it's up to us to grasp every opportunity to take in more joy. Queen of Fire, amazing energy. Um, this is as the moon is in the sign of Virgo, we are building towards, I'm sorry, it's in the sign of Leo at the time I'm recording this, but I was looking at a couple of days ahead. Five of Fire, this is a very mercurial card speaking to imminent changes that you might be making in your life, in your lifestyle choices um, from your heart to your brain as you decide, hey, I'm going to pursue more of my joy, more of my passion and take the driver's seat of my life. The choices that you're making to improve your circumstances will be marked for either deletion or completion. So let me grab this card that fell. So with the lovers, you guys are absolutely building your dream life. You guys are achieving it because we have Chiron and the North Node in your 11th house. So your social standing at present is going to continue to blossom, to grow as you emerge as the victor of your circumstances and no longer a victim to maybe the upbringing that you've had. Um, you might have had a very critical maternal figure because your fourth house is ruled by the sign of Virgo. Um, your paternal figure could have been critical of you, but it's up to you to take the steps into a new life, into pursuing more of your passion, pursuing more of your pleasure. So I would like the sacred symbol Oracle to let Gemini know what it is that they need to know at this time. Well, we got a couple cards. We got the divine masculine with the Empress. So some of us might be coming to terms with balancing out our needs to enjoy pleasure and receive it. And the divine masculine is setting up times and a schedule for us to actually get into relaxation, to really cherish all that we have come to acquire, all that we seek to acquire. And in doing so, it might actually attract a counterpart during this Virgo season that is able to nurture you, that no longer um, mirrors the voice that you might be taking with yourself internally um, from this paternal figure. And I sense that the South Node and Black Moon Lilith with Juno and Venus in your fifth house, it's just getting like your whole system through the washer. You guys are updating your system. You guys are updating your internal system of how you dialogue with yourself. And that's making a huge change. Lots of reverberations out into your external world. And on top of that, we have power with the Six of Fire. I love that Hathor is here twice. It's like this continual presence of Hathor. So power codes, good news, victory, public rec recognition and awards. It's like you guys are with, I sense with Pluto and Aquarius, it hasn't retrograded yet. It's going to do that at midnight on the second, same day as the new moon in Virgo. And I sense maybe you guys are claiming your power. Maybe you guys are starting to understand how reality and the fabric of co-creation with the divine works you wish for it, you think about it, and so it materializes. We have good fortune with the Queen of Fire, so there seems to be some magical drip going on 
within you from confidence. There is a glow of confidence in your aura. That's coming from both of these cards for me. And that 13 degree aspect, there will be a Friday the 13th this Virgo season. So while I'm reading for the week of the 1st through the 7th, just keep in mind, we will have a Friday the, the 13th. And that is typically celebrated as the Day of the Goddess. Um, the moon on that day will be at... It'll be at 17 degrees Capricorn at the start of the day. And Gemini, that is your 8th house. Your 8th house when Pluto is in your 8th house. I sense that you guys are going to make better decisions for where you invest your energy on a daily basis for the long-term ambition, the long-term desire. Um, we want to make sure that our desires are aligned with the divine so that when things manifest, we don't have to question where they came from or what they're here to serve us for. With the five of fire, we have magic. And with the lovers, we have transmute. These, this is such a powerful reading, Gemini. It feels like you guys are tapping into the potential, the could be, would be, should be, now you guys are empowering yourselves to take a stance for your becoming and in doing so you're getting closer to what you love and transmuting any internal dialogue any internal conflict that would hold you back repress your expression and keep you from investing in yourself in the long term that is what pluto retrograding into capricorn for me just feels like us reassessing the ways that we go about for you all making those decisions for the eighth house matters the house of sex death rebirth your superpowers your um long-term partnerships and let's actually get the um time passages definition of the eighth house for you guys The eighth house symbolizes issues of death, rebirth, sexuality, and transformation. As this house follows the house of relationship, it refers to the fruits of relationship, and these include the power to change based on new understanding made possible when one is no longer acting solely as an individual but co-creating with the divine. Planets in this house are difficult, difficult to interpret but may refer to how sexuality is manifested or to lessons you need to learn in order to grow and change, and Pluto, as a planetary body, represents, okay, it goes into like the actual planetary discovery. So from an astrological perspective, Pluto is very strong. The famed god of the underworld in Greek mythology, the corresponding god is Hades. Pluto is a force for change that could be destructive in its power. Pluto rules the sign of Scorpio and is exalted in Leo. Pluto is related to will and intense passion and has a reputation for ruthlessness. As god of the underworld, Pluto can help bring our deepest and most buried compulsions into the light. Its position indicates areas of life that must ultimately become transformed as a part of the soul's evolution. On the lighter side, Pluto is associated with renewal and rebirth. It represents endings, new beginnings, spiritual growth, and rebirth again. The negative expression of Pluto is an obsessive desire for power, which you guys got a lot of that in this reading, which I sense that you guys are actually coming out of any negative grips with power, with authority, as you guys claim power over your own ability to work with your heart. In the chart, the position of Pluto by sign will be shared with other people in the same generation. So you guys might have been the generation to have Pluto in Aquarius and so many other people have that. Actually, that would indicate you guys would indicate this being maybe your natal sign, just depending on the year that you were born. I'm going to get into the mother piece tarot because I think we get the gist of it. Like with the Empress, you guys got divine masculine and the shaman of discs. So it's like you're taking your creations out into the world because you understand the value of the time invested in them. In the course of this week, you might just start to do that. You might just start to realize, hey, I've done a lot of investing here, here, and here. These things are things that I want to grow in the long term. So I'm going to start ma like man mass manufacturing feelings that benefit me when I show up in my routines to have a stronger emotional foundation when I go to have these long-term investments. With power, we got the Ten of Wands. These people are in an ecstatic frenzy, which it feels very much like the exaltation of Pluto and Leo. It's like everyone's beating their drum. People are communicating. 
um, it feels like a celebration is in order. With the Queen of Fire and Good Fortune, we have the Four of Cups. And this to me, I love this card. It represents emotional depth and maybe even this fourth house transit, the energy of the sun moving from nine degrees Virgo to 15 degrees Virgo, which we'll get to the inside degrees now, just so that we have it stated. Virgo nine to 15 degrees. So Virgo at nine degrees is a man mixing cement. And then we go from that to a man inherits a vast fortune. So if you could imagine that trajectory, which we're going to start my 10 day miracle manifestation course on September 2nd, catch it live, catch it when you catch it and manifest your intentions, plant them deep in the soil. That emotional fortification for you, Gemini specifically will manifest as your social circle sorry, not your social circle, but your legacy taking off. If not this year, in the coming six months with repetition, with sustained um, direction, sustained actions to fortify these intentions, when the North and South Node are in Virgo and Pisces respectively, we will actually start to build this legacy that you guys are due to build, that you guys are due to bring in your genius with both Jupiter and Mars currently transiting your sign you, you all might have a feeling of this power and know that when your intentions are clear, the rest falls into place, just like that man mixing cement and the man inheriting a great fortune. Gender aside, know that anything is possible when you're clear on your intentions. So for my subscribers joining this reading for the Gemini reading or for those of you all just watching, hit the bell so you're notified. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here. That way, when I go live, you will see it and you can get clear on your intentions and we can manifest miracles together in this 10 day period, starting with the new moon in Virgo. So let's get back to your reading. Wow. <laughs> with magic, we have the magician and the five of fire. So I know that the five of wands typically means competing goals, bothersome details, conflict with others, but I sense that you guys are finding a way out and through that. It's like the five of wands to me is more representing Mercury's move into Virgo, into the fourth house from your third house where there was a retrograde where you had to rethink why and how and when you communicated and when you held it in. Now we are going to filter everything through the heart. And maybe even this retrograde was a powerful time for you guys to remember your magic, to reclaim how you show up on social media, how you portray and express your talents what the reason you got so many downloads in your younger non-judgmental creative years was in between then and now and how you can start to mix up that cement that for that staying power, that longevity, that potential that you guys have to manifest and to percolate into a brew that you love, that nice fresh cup of warmth, that cup of sunshine, that cup of your confidence in the world. Wow. And then with the lovers and transmute, we got the five of discs. So this is the card of showing up daily repetition, just showing up to show up. If, if you don't have an, another reason for doing it, it's just because that five, that mercurial energy is compelling you to keep speaking, to keep sharing your insight, to keep sharing your wisdom so that when you inherit your fortune, you have the various um, dividends to make. You have the various cups to fill. And just like that four of cups, having the directions covered with maybe even some that good fortune. When, when you know what you're going to do with your good fortune, your good fortune can come. It's like you, you're holding out this, this energy, the sustained energy of knowing your confidence, expecting good fortune by setting yourself up for success with intentions. And then you have the directions covered north, south, east, and west. And I, in the past I've, I have spoken to, um, Setting up altars in the directions. One of my friends, she's the channel, Krista Marie Miller speaks to having altar spaces set up in the four directions so that an energy can come in and can feel welcome. And then you cleanse with like sage just to make sure that you're clearing out any of your own perceptions that might be cast onto your potential. And with that, you, you sustain a flow, you sustain a rhythm of receiving and then pouring out what doesn't serve. So the mother piece tarot says cleansing the self of old emotions, and in the reverse, a new relationship with new values. So I sense that you all are starting to see how valuable you are when you're 
serving from your heart when you're communicating and expressing your authenticity and regardless of what others might cast onto it because people come from a lot of belief systems but that has nothing to do with us even when people make issues about us it's never about us it's always about the externals perception of who we are what we're doing to them let's get a goddess power oracle and one card from the salvador dali tarot all right goddess power oracle what would you like to empower gemini with in this amazing week it feels like you guys are on the glow up um, it's because you also have jupiter at that degree of 19 and mars at 27 starting on september 1st setting the week up for you guys to take action in the outer world and action within your interpersonal relationships to manifest greatness fortune good luck we have mama kosha which is water and she's giving 33. all right so let's see what this deck has to say The empowerment message. The world we inhabit began from the oceanic waters of life and the waters that surround us in the womb, both of which are the domain of the Incan goddess Mama Kocha. We are most attuned to the qualities of water as the element of water symbolically represents our emotions. Our emotions move us to make and perceive the world as we know it. The beauty in this truth is found by observing water in all her properties and forms. Water is fluid and passes through cracks and flaws in the ground without stress, moving around obstacles and patiently wearing away the most jagged rocks until they are smooth and gleaming. Water ebbs and flows, comes and goes in a powerful rhythmic motion as the seas and oceans reveal their promise of release and return. Water rises up from the ground and seeds the clouds and then rains upon the earth to ensure growth and sustain life can you believe it you guys got with this good fortune it, it looks like rain and then the four of cups i love this for you guys water turns into hard ice and blankets the world in a protective shell even of soft snow allowing the dormancy of life to herald a time of dreaming when the ice melts the cycles begin again the answer to your question lies in determining what form of water reveals the condition of your life and then recognizing the next evolution of your life's potential. I did a personal reading for myself before yours, Gemini, and it spoke to the soul needing a winter as well as a summer, being able to embrace the joy that is yours, especially with the queen of fire underlying these cards of good fortune and the four of cups. But she's cozy, she's on her throne, she's seated in splendor. Maybe she's dreaming about the summer of her soul. If you are in an ebb, you can expect a flow. If things are temporarily frozen, they will soon melt. If, seem, if it seems that your world is too wet and temporary shelter is needed, you can expect new growth and sunny days again. Mama Kocha reminds you that the waters of your life are perfect as they are now and just as perfect in the way they will evolve. Unlimited potential is revealed when this goddess comes to visit. So the best way forward, Gemini, is just consistent, consistency showing up consistently in your talents and your gifts, making an effort to sustain your emotional foundation by making yourself feel pleasure, joy from being confident and expressing yourself. We have the Ace of Swords as our final card for your reading for this week, Gemini. So let's get to the Salvador Dali Tarot for the practical guidance. Rise and stand up straight. Gain strength from your knowledge and delve into everything you don't yet know. You possess and you will need clear reasoning and staying power. Brain jogging and physical exercise will support your mental faculties. Enjoy your newfound clarity. All right, Gemini, thank you so much for tuning into this reading. I hope you all will join me in the 10-Day Miracle Maker course. And until next time, aloha.